Hey, cutie. We've not seen you in ages. Berenice. What a surprise. Look, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you know a certain Teo Male? Uh, no. But surely the owner does. You're lucky he's in right now. Your no one knows everyone you know. You're as charming as ever. Thank you, Berenice. Ah, uh, call me baby like everybody else. Right, I've got to run too, cutie. You know, work. See you soon, okay? Yes, uh, anyway, you know my address. Come up and see me sometime. Ciao. Ciao! Come on, let's see that hot hand of yours. Queen and her three sisters. Oh no, are you doing it on purpose or what? Three of a kind. To beat my three aces. Right, I've had it. I'm off. Ah, Hulo, you're not going now, are you? Not when I was about to relieve you of your car. Don't start, Malay. Do not think that you can get away with things just because you have settled your bar tab. Why, it is McPherson. Hey, McPherson, come over here. McPherson? Who is that? Another American in Paris who is broke. Let me introduce you. McPherson, let me introduce Théo Malay. Hi. Right, I will leave you two. I have work to do. Hi. I get the feeling I've seen you before somewhere. Have you ever been to New York? Oh, no, Mac. I'm so absent-minded sometimes. The jacket. The Orfe. You're a doorman at the Orfe. If you are interested in the suit, I will give you a good deal. As far as I'm concerned, it is ancient history. You didn't like your job anymore. Yet the Orfe is a prestigious hotel. You are very nosy. Do you want my old job or something? Maybe the hotel did not pay you enough. Or maybe you found other sources of income. I'm the sole heir of some old fart or other. I'm taking the first train back to Brittany. Oh, I see. You've earned enough to be able to afford a nice retirement. Pay off all your debts to the waiter at the Nantes and make yourself scarce. Now wait, who are you? Do you work for the cops or what? I have done nothing wrong. I may be a friend of Hulot, but I'm also a private detective in my spare time. Oh goody, a private eye all to myself. And who might you be working for? here to cause you any trouble, Mele. I just want some information about someone I think you might know. Really? This is a nice surprise. A private eye who needs me. What do you want to know? A few days ago, something happened at the Orfe. Something truly awful. As you probably know, an American couple was found dead there. Murdered. I'm reliably informed you were on duty that night. You even had a drink in the cafe next door, the Nantes, with someone suspicious. Maybe even the murderer himself. Does that mean anything to you? Find someone else. Frankly, I have nothing to say. I have something to show you. Do you recognize this man?
That's all very well. But how am I going to find that man now? He'll never come back to the Alambic. I knew the Yanks were strange, but to talk to yourself out loud and in French to boot? Some are stranger than others. See you soon. McPherson, here again. You've got back your tit for life. Hulot, you remember the guy who ran off the other night when I wanted to talk to him? Had you ever seen him in the Alambic before? That man is dangerous, Hulot. He's the prime suspect in this nasty murder business. Should I know him? No. I, I do not know who it is. But he did not seem too keen on meeting you. Unless I'm very much mistaken, Hulo, you were the last person to see Malay before he disappeared the other night. You don't just run off like that for no reason. Believe me, Malay has got something serious on his conscience. Maybe he's mixed up in this murder. I will not say another word about Malay, but I am sure of one thing, he is not a killer. I don't mean to go on, but it was very strange of Malay to run off like that. It really sets you thinking. In fact, I'm thinking about talking to the police about him, him and his circle of friends. The guy who ran off seemed much more guilty. Maybe it has something to do with politics. He had a foreign look about him, this chap with his moustache. Try finding him. But that doesn't explain why Malay ran off. There must be some reason. It can't be me or he'd have run away as soon as I arrived. Macpherson, leave Malay alone. I saw his face when he ran out the back door. It was not guilt that made him run away. It was fear. This time, Hulot, I think Malay really has done something shady. Has he been back since that night? McPherson, you are wasting your time with Malay. He has not been in the Alambic since... Anyway, I already told you he's a stand-up kind of guy. He paid me what he owed, and that is all I care about. What do you know about my investigation, Albert? Strangely, no one has said a word. Nobody cares, except your client, I imagine. The press has hardly mentioned it. Even the police have not really investigated with much conviction. This murder has not hit the headlines. But you must know a bit more about it than you're letting on, Hulo. American tourists killed in their hotel room without so much as a clue? No papers, nothing? Have you got any leads? All that I know comes from the papers, and that's all I want to know. As far as I am concerned, the matter is closed, basta cosi. Look, I have a small problem. There's this lock I've mislaid the key to. Would you know of a way I could open it without damaging anything? That and a few sticks of dynamite should set you up for that bank job, right? Seriously, Mac. Why would I be carrying all that stuff? Do I look like a hardware store? mischief involved. It's just for a friend who needs a helping hand. Illegal or not, I am not the one doing it, so... Okay, Mac, I will help you. But in exchange, I want you to do me a small favor. 
a little job. Do not worry, it is nothing risky. I know you are good at this kind of thing. This painting is a reproduction and here is the real thing. Do you notice any differences? I won't bother you any longer, Ulo. But make sure I can still reach you. I may need you sometime soon. Goodbye, McPherson. Be careful. McPherson, here again. You've got back your tit for life. So there's the job done, quick as you like. Take your paintings back, Ulu. I've finished. Better check in case I've missed out any details. I won't bother you any longer, Ulo. But make sure I can still reach you. I may need you sometime soon. Goodbye, McPherson. Be careful. Great! The private eye returns! I have some fabulous new information on the Orfe case. A portrait of the killer. Here, look. My God, I do not believe it. Let me warn Inspector Lebrun immediately. Do you recognize him? Wait, do you know who he is? You. Elouin? Jacques Elouin? It's impossible. Elouin. The name rings a bell. If only I could see that vision again. Control that vision. If only... The inspector would like to see you immediately. Come in, come in, dear sir, come in. Mr. McPherson, I presume, would be private detective? <laughs> I have no time to waste with snoops. What do you know about the White case? I don't have time to waste either, Inspector. I've got some news on the White case. I am listening, McPherson. Go on, fire away. I... I have a portrait of a suspect. A suspect who may very well be the guilty party. Where is this uh, portrait from, McPherson? What difference does it make where this portrait came from? I just want to know if this man has a record, if he's a known criminal. Mr. McPherson, you did not answer. The drawing, where is it from? Inspector, I'm sure your time is valuable. Why not just tell me who the man is in this portrait? 
People like you who step out of line, McPherson, I lock him up. How does a short spell and a clink sound, huh? You have no right. I haven't broken any laws. Very well, McPherson. I do not need you anyway. I have the portrait of the killer. Can't you see I'm busy? Come back later, McPherson. Great! The private eye returns! Bove, I know you recognize the man in the sketch. Who is it? No! I do not believe it! It is my friend Elouin, Jacques Elouin. We were in the squad together. He's a detective in the 11th now. His mother is not going to like this. Shit! It's not possible. No, no. Something is not right. Obviously. What else did I expect? Looks like there's nobody in there. I need to find a way to take a look around. Of course the door is locked, and the front desk clerk is hardly likely to open it for me. I must find a way to get in.
Whew. It smells like ether, only stronger. And my head is spinning. Looks like black hair dye. Locked, obviously. What else did I expect? Looks like there's nobody in there need to find a way to take a look around. My name is McPherson. I expected to find Jack Eloin here. Do you know where he is? My son is away. He is... He is not here. Why do you want to see him? Madame, Eloin is wanted by the police. For murder. Liar! I do not believe you. Jacques is not a criminal. Get out! He's not here! Scram! Any idea where he may be hiding? Hiding? I swear he's not here. Why would he hide? I have not seen him uh, for several days. I have no idea where he is. You're lying, Madame Eloy. Tell me where I can find your son. I mean him no harm. On the contrary, I need to talk to him. You do not want to harm him. Can... can I trust you? Please understand, Eloé has not done anything. He's afraid, that's all. He's not hiding, but he needs help. My son is up there. Follow me. He 
is upstairs. I just go on up. Right. Jacques Alloin, I'm arresting you for the murder of Regis and Ruby White. I'm innocent. I may have led the murderer to the Eatons, but I did not kill them. The Eatons? What are you talking about? It's a long story, but this is what happened. It was after a rather tiresome case. The story of adultery that ended badly. The husband had hired me because his wife had supposedly run off with the money. She told quite another story, of course. I will spare you the details. I came home shattered. During my absence, a certain De Alpin had come by about some employees who had swindled him. I knew that De Alpin was a banker and that there would be plenty of money in it, but I was dead on my feet. So I told my mother to call him back and tell him to get lost. That's when she showed me the check. So, off I went again. And who scrubs? Old Muggins here. Who are you? Can't you see I'm not here? If it's for the poor, I gave at the office. Lovely day, isn't it? Say, can you give me the Eaton's room number? The Eatons? What do you want from the Eatons? Are you a friend of theirs? You don't look the sort they would associate with. I were in the same regiment during the Great War. We bonded and I was in love with his sister Gracie. So when I heard they were coming to Paris, I just had to surprise them. It is certainly going to be a surprise, except you're the one who's going to be on the receiving end. As I understand it, you and your sister, ha, <laughs> that's a laugh. His sister, the tramp. She's not his sister, she's his dame. That Mr. Paul really conned you. In any case, <laughs> your lovebirds have flown the nest. Wait, you mean Paul and his sister are not in fact brother and sister? I know how to recognize lovebirds, thank you. Yours were more like two vultures about to devour each other. Always tearing each other's hair out. And she was the one who ruled the roost. She was hardly ever around. That Paul used to get in a right state when he was hanging out with the Montparnasse lot. Montparnasse? You mean people who live in the Montparnasse district? The, the artist quarter? 
Bohan dealt with Arthur's there. Anywhere in particular? The Alembic Gang? That's where all the Leobirds met. Birds of a feather stick together, as they say. These bloody rascals really want to drive me up the wall. I have a floor to scrub. So you with the mustache, clear off or I'll chuck you out on your ear. Well, I'll be. Here you are again. Those grubby kids are already driving me crazy. I don't need a mug hanging around watching me work. Clear off. I'll make you eat my sponge as a snack, mark my words. And where do you think you're going, eh? You gonna walk over me to get in here? Some people have work to do. Wait till I catch you! Hey! Not my flowers! My beautiful flowers! Wait! They're going to see what I'm made of. some cleaning to do. Good evening, sir. Are you expected? My name is Edouin. I've come to see the master of the house. Would you introduce me, please? Sorry, sir. My master cannot see you. But tell me, old chap, 
Your name would not be Dumoulin, would it? I do not believe I know you. You are? Mr. Dumoulin, my name is Jacques Eloin, with an H. I'm Private Dick hired by one of your members, Mr. Grégoire de Alpin. Now that you know who I am, and whom I work for, I'm sure we'll get along much better. Mr. de Alpin is absent. He's not here, I mean. Uh, do you know him? I have never seen you at the Brotherhood's meeting. Sorry, I should have shown you the letter signed by Mr. de Alpin authorizing me to investigate in his behalf. But that is not Mr. de Alpin's handwriting. You're trying to fool me! Mr. de Alpin has asked me to find out about the Eatons. Gracie and Paul. What can you tell me about them? Indeed, Madame did come here. She was introduced by one of our most illustrious members. However, the name Paul Eaton means nothing to me. If I were you, I would not hold this woman in such high esteem. She and her brother stole money and valuable objects from Mr. Dalpin. Did you notice anything missing here as well? Nothing is missing, sir. So why did Mr. Dalpin require your services? She became his protégé, introduced by one of our most respected members. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but... Mr. de Alpin told me himself that she stole the money from him. Their relationship has now certainly been compromised. Did you happen to notice if she was meeting any other members of the Lodge? Our Brotherhood is private, sir. You must leave the premises, otherwise I shall be forced to call the authorities. I thought I had already told you, sir, that your presence was not desirable. This is a private establishment, sir. Only members and their guests are admitted. You were not announced, sir. I wasn't expecting you. How can I help you? Hello, Doctor. Jacques Eloin, private detective. Sorry I am out of business cards. You'll have to take my word for it. That way we'll both be in the same boat. A private eye. I am sure you are well aware I am not at liberty to discuss one of my patients. Doctor-patient confidentiality. That's what's so frustrating about doctors. As soon as you walk in the room, they have guessed the reason for your visit. My job is to discover intention. I found your business card at the home of... Um, of someone who's not so innocent. I have no control over who has one of my calling cards, Mr. Elouin. The proof? You yourself have one. And yet... I never gave it to you. You do not happen to have a patient by the name of Gracie Eaton, Dr. Kofner? Gracie Eaton? Of course, Mr. Elwin. 
What do you want to know about Gracie Eaton? Gracie Eaton is a little crazy, isn't she? You do treat the mentally ill, don't you? <laughs> Not all of my patients are ready for a straitjacket, Mr. Elwin. On the contrary, I care for all those with tormented souls. It's called therapy. One could classify Miss Eaton in this category. Since you're friends with my client, could you tell me what was going on between him and Gracie Eaton? These details concern Mr. De Alpin alone. You worry about finding the Eatons and ignore the distractions you find along the way, Mr. Elwa. It is for the best. You know why I've been hired? And I won't hide the fact that I do not have any hard facts on the theft. Is there anything you can tell me? You know enough to complete your investigation, Mr. Elwin. Listen, old chap. If you want to know where the Eatons are hiding, you have come to the wrong place. Yes, I introduced Gracie Eaton to the companions. Yes, she knew the Alpin. But as to how intimate they were, that is their business. All I can tell you is that if I knew where she and her brother were, you would not be here. So do the job you are being paid to do, Mr. Elwin. Find the thieves and let us get on with the rest. We each have our own role, do we not? You do not seem to understand, Mr. Elwin. Your presence here is not welcome. I demand you leave my office. And the time he dressed up as an angel, and he... Did not have a string on his bow. Berenice. Oh, sorry. Jacques Eloi. Perhaps you could help me. Why not? Would you like a drink? Come on, don't be silly. I'm a modern girl. Come, have a seat. I've never been here. I would remember your face. I'm curious to know what brings you here. Today must be my lucky day. In my job, I usually deal with punks, not cute dolls like you. I'm a detective. You happen to know a certain Polly? The American? Paul Eaton? Yes, I know him. He's been filling our heads with his stories for the past month. He and the owner are mates. Interesting story about Eaton. Is he on to something big? Did he give you any details? Mind you, with guys like him, you never know what to believe. I'm fond of you, Snoop. You know how to go about things. I'm going to help you. Paul Eaton was in Paris for a contract. A scam that would make him rich. His wife was his accomplice. Then he got the jitters. He is hiding now. Hulot, the owner, definitely knows more. You'll have to see him about that. Only thing is, he's not too fond of private Snoops. The owner, Hulot, is also your friend. Hmm. Would you be kind enough to introduce us? The owner's not here. He's just driven off. Actually, I think he had a rendezvous with Eaton. Damn it, this is too much. I'm always one step behind. 
This time, I'll catch them before they slip away again. It is simple, Jacques. The owner went dashing off. He mentioned a restaurant, getting back late. How would I know? Honest. I went to his place before coming to the Alambique and <laughs> like magic they disappeared. So I thought you might be able to help me. We do not really know what Eaton is doing in Paris. In the beginning, he said he was with his sister, a student. After a few binges, his sister had become his wife, and they were both onto the scam of the century. in shining armor left you alone in such a place. That's hardly wise. I'm old enough to look after myself, but thanks for the thought. Charming. I can feel that, like me, you're dying to know where Paul Eaton and his wife are. What was Paul planning to do after his job? Any ideas? The owner Hulot knows a thing or two. Paul only spoke English and he never mentioned any names. He could not have known much. It's not because you drink like a fish that you know more. It was his other half who pulled the strings. been planning something. He could not have just given up like a complete idiot. It must be a diversion. It smacks of a wild goose chase. Charming and smart, that P.I. Only he has it wrong. It was not the banker's money the Edens were after. It was a treasure he had hidden in his place. The woman took care of seducing him. Paul was there to pick the fruit when it was ripe. He was completely manipulated, that poor Paul. That's all you know, is it? In any case, someone as charming as you is always beyond suspicion. Ciao, Snoop. Good luck. You again? It seems like you enjoy hanging around here. At your service now that we're acquainted. What about Paul? Does he come here often? You know, if he starts bugging you, it would give me more reasons to nail him. You know, Jacques, that Eaton smells like trouble. One day, he turns up from God knows where with his little British accent. After a few drink sessions with Hulot, the owner, he loses his accent. After that, he shows up here practically every day, more American than ever. Then wham! No more news. How fitting. I was planning on inviting you. But a restaurant in Paris. It's like looking for a needle in the haystack. Any idea which one? And why would I know? Eaton talked about going out to a chic restaurant with his wife. But he did not even know which one. It was Hulot who scribbled down the address before leaving. That's all you know, is it? In any case, someone as charming as you is always beyond suspicion. Ciao, Snoop. Good luck. seems to have been ripped out in a hurry.
Hulot is implicated in this affair? But how? Who knows? He's a fence, is he not? I've brought you a little snack. Thank you. I'll just put it there. We'll help ourselves. Okay, where was I? Oh, uh, yes, the restaurant. Good evening, sir. Welcome to Chez Alexandre. Do you have a reservation? I'm here to see some friends. Two Americans, a couple. The Eatons. I hope I haven't missed them. I do not see any reservation under that name. Maybe they have reserved a table in another establishment. Oh, come on, try a little. Another guy may have joined them. A certain Hulu. You should have said so. Of course I remember them. They had quite a scene during the meal, arguing non-stop. In the end, a man turned up, and they all left in a car. But you're mistaken about the name. It was white, not eaten. Of that, I'm sure. Well, if that's all you have, the Whites will have to do. Do you know where I can find them? I hope they're not too far away. This is becoming quite urgent. Are you sure these are the Americans you're looking for? You know Paris is crawling with Americans. If it's of any help to you, I remember this particular couple put their bill onto an account at the Hotel Orfe in the 8th District. An establishment undoubtedly all too respectable for them. I seem to remember that the lady has already been here with Mr. De Alpin. Sometimes appearances can be misleading, you know. Like the gentleman who joined them. Well dressed, beautiful car, very, very high class. But he could have been a hoodlum too, for all I know. Ah, it's hard to know who you can trust, huh? Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orfe. How may I help you? White. I've come to see the Whites. Which room might I find them in? We do not give out such information, sir. Not without the prior agreement of our clients. Come on, pal. Be a sport. I can pay. Sir, you shall obtain nothing from me with money. I'll give you the goods on the whites. And you'll tell me if they stayed at the Orfe. Deal? I have no interest in prying into the whites' lives. Hotel Orphe's guests have a right to privacy, sir. Ha, <laughs> I had you going there for a minute. The Whites really are guests at your hotel. Why, I never, I, I, I strongly advise you to leave this establishment before I call the authorities. Hey, and, um, while we're at it, any chance I can get their room number as well? That is enough. I refuse to talk to you any further. You're not the first guard dog I have encountered, but you're certainly the toughest. I'll let you think about it. Do not worry, though. I'll be back soon. It is better that way, sir. Okay, what do I do now? Now what? If you want any leads about the Whites, wait for me at the Nazi. I will give you some. 
This case is really beginning to get on my nerves. What can I get you, sir? A bottle, please. That will be five francs, sir. All right. Thanks and good day. You're welcome, sir. Sit down. What do you want with the whites? You look like someone who might be able to slip me some info about the whites. We will see. How much will you pay? That's what I like. Helpful men like you. But careful. You will not get your dough until I have checked out the info. I know how much info is worth even to a private dick that is flat broke. Not that it will take a lot to make me happy. You do not become rich by being a hotel doorman. How long have they been at the hotel? They've only been in the hotel for three days. Since they never leave their room, it does not take much to figure out what they are up to in there. No, they have never set foot here before. Have the Whites had any visitors since their arrival? Solitary types. If you ask me, they are not tourists. They hardly ever came out of their hole. They put everything on the hotel bill. Meals, clothes, alcohol. The room has been booked for a good month. The man went out a couple of times at night. The White. Do you know who I'm talking about? Well, there are a couple. What's Mrs. White like? Is she hot? Yes. A tall guy and a beautiful dame, both of them Americans. They are definitely a couple. Slept in the same bed, bathed in the same tub. Huh. <laughs> Never a dull moment, those whites. Always leading the good life. That being said, I do not envy them. Cash can go to your head sometimes. You can tell right away the whites are not very classy people. No manners. They think they can get away with murder. Will you give me their room number? I'm gonna pay them a little. Room 507, but you are out of luck. They are not there. Must have kissed and made up. The dame has dyed her hair red. Look, I've got other things to do, you know. It's not like your money is going to a life of leisure. You ought to hire a private eye. So, I would like to take a quick look. Room 507. Just a quick look. That's when I saw the most amazing thing in my life. I do not know if it was the smoke that blurred my vision, but one thing is for sure. 
That creature was not trying to keep them alive. And the damn creature saw me. I have fought in the war, I know, but I've never seen the likes of that. When his eyes stared at me, I ran. Yes, I fled like a little kid. There must have been something in the air because I fainted right after that. I came around later, near the Alambic. That's where you saw me. Mom? Is that you? Ah, no. Jacques Alouin, I'm arresting you for the double murder of the Whites. Believe me, I'm not the culprit. Speak to my mother, she'll give you the proof. Well, thank you for your help. What? Yes, I had you followed, and you led us straight to the culprit. No. Something is off. I've been tricked like a sucker. But by who? <laughs> 